crime knows no frontiers. To combat the growing menace of the international criminal, the police forces of the world have opened up their own national boundaries. At their headquarters in Paris, scientifically equipped to match the speed of the jet age, 63 nations have linked together to form the International Criminal Police Organization, Interpol. Open up. Monsieur Ronald Millet. That's right. I'm arresting you for the kidnapping of Louisa Howard. Where's my daughter, you? Easy, Mr. Howard. Ronald. Darling, what is it? What's going on? It's all right, darling. These gentlemen seem to think I was kidnapping you. You started this. Ronald Millet is my fiancé. You knew all the time Millie hadn't kidnapped your daughter. Yes, I did. You knew it was just an elopement. Of course I did, but I had to do something to stop them. They start this phony kidnap hunt and alert Interpol and half the police forces of Europe. You were doing your job. You deliberately gave false information to the police. I'm sorry. Louise is my only child. Do you know what sort of a man this Millet is? We know. Women with money, that's his racket. He plays the great lover, squeezes every last cent out of them, and then dumps them. We know, Mr. Howard. We heard about Millie from half a dozen countries. He ought to be in jail. He has no criminal record. Ah, oh, that makes everything fine. There's nothing in the book, so you can just sit back and watch. Louisa wants to marry him. Well, she's your daughter. It's up to you. I wish it were. She won't listen to me. I suppose it's my own fault. I've given the girl little enough attention since her mother died. Is she serious about this marriage? She's serious. And stubborn. Look, suppose you talk to her. Me? Yes. You know all about Millet's background. She might listen to you. All right. If you agree to one thing. What? Stay away from Millet and your daughter. Look, there's nothing you can tell me about Ronald that I don't know already. He's been completely frank with me. It's one of the reasons I love him. He's told you everything and you don't mind. Well, all that was before we met. With us, it's different. We're in love. You mean you're in love? But does he love you? Of course he does. Look, we're going to get married and nobody's going to stop us. Your father will try. In two months, I shall be able to make my own decisions. Hmm. I, Louisa Howard, will take thee, Ronald Millet, to be my lawful wedded husband. And with all my worldly goods, I thee and thou. Goodbye, Miss Howard. Well? Now, Millet has confessed to her about his past. She has forgiven him. She's got something to forgive. This just came from Interpol. A full rundown on Millet. Hmm. What do you think of these? I thought you'd be interested. Yes. So will Millet. I'm only too glad to help. What do you want to know? Did you marry a Carlotta Darina in Rome in 1957? Why ask what you already know? On the marriage certificate, you described yourself as a bachelor. Did I? Oh, it's no offense, is it? Except possibly to a spinster. Except possibly because you were already married. Eight years previously to Emma Ehrlich in Zurich. You have been busy. And there is no record of a legal divorce from your first wife. I hardly thought it was necessary. Your second marriage was bigamous. Oh, you'll find that very difficult to prove, you know. I admit I made a slight error in describing myself as a bachelor for my second marriage, but I was free to marry. Yes? My first wife was dead. When? A long time ago in Loran, my hometown. 
Here is the death certificate to save you tedious inquiries. Oh, will that be all, gentlemen? I'll keep this if you don't mind. Of course. Oh, I must remember to send you an invitation to my wedding in two months' time. To the beautiful Miss Howard. Ah. The women fall for a man like that. It happens. The only way to stop it is to stop him. He hasn't put a foot wrong? No. I wonder why he called himself a bachelor instead of a widower. To cover up something. Could be. I'd like to check with the doctor who signed the death certificate. Dr. Mata? Yes? My housekeeper says that you insist on seeing me. You realize that I no longer practice. No, we're not patients, doctor. Lebrun. Geneva Police. This is Inspector Duval of Interpol. Sorry to disturb you, Doctor, but we want to check on the death of a woman named Mrs. Emma Millet. Well, Doctor? Mrs. Millet? Yes, I remember her. You signed the death certificate? Yes, yes, that's right. What's this all about? Just give us the details, please, Doctor. Well, it was a long time ago. Multiple injuries. You should remember a case like that. Well, as I recall, she had a fractured skull and ribs. I think and her legs, too, were broken. How did she sustain these injuries? Why do you want to know? Just answer my question, please. There was an accident. What sort of an accident? A car crash. What happened? How should I know? I wasn't there. Doctor, you are deliberately evading my questions. She went over the edge of a mountain road in her car. Was she alone? Yes. Doctor, think carefully. When you examined the body, did you find anything suspicious? What do you mean? Well, for example, is it possible that death occurred before the car went over the edge? Quite impossible. Are you questioning my death certificate? No, Doctor. We just want to know how Mrs. Millet died. Then you know all I can tell you. Her car went over Mountain Road, and she died from multiple injuries sustained in the crash. I see. Thank you, Doctor. He was covering up. Yes, but what? I'll check on Mrs. Millet's accident. The local police will have a record. Maybe there's a better way. If you want to know something about a man's first wife, ask the second wife. But she's in Rome. It's only two hours by plane. It could be worth it. Sorry, but if you don't buy a drink, I don't eat. That's all right. So you were married to Ronald Millet? Yes. How do you think I got this low? Tell me about him. Underneath that charming front, just about the rottenest creature that ever walked on two legs. Cruel, vicious, sadistic. You name it, he is it. Did he ever speak about his first wife? Only that she died. She was lucky. Take a good look, Inspector. How old do you think I am? I'm 23. When I married Ronald Millet, I had two things. Youth and money. Took them both. I'm sorry. Well, it's all right. It was my own fault. 
I should have walked out on him sooner. You walked out? Why? I, I was frightened. I, I think he tried to kill me. What happened? Car ran off the road. It was a mountain road. I just jumped clear in time. Where's your man? Inspector Duval is not here, monsieur. I can see that. Where is he? Why do you ask? Why? Because I want to know what's going on, that's why. All this talk about fixing things with my daughter and what's he done, absolutely nothing. He has spoken to her, monsieur. Spoken to her? What did he do? Give her his blessing? She and Mila have been going about hand in hand ever since she got here. These things take time. Time? You've had all the time I'm giving you. You tell Inspector Duval from me that if he doesn't do something, I will. That would be very foolish, monsieur. I know how you feel, but believe me, we're doing everything possible. Monsieur, to help you, Inspector Duval took the trouble to fly to Rome. He got back just an hour ago. Shall we go, darling? You are Louise Howard, are you not? Yes. I recognized you from your newspaper photographs. Really? I was hoping we would meet someday. Oh? Why? We have something in common. Ronald Millet. I was his second wife. Oh. What's the matter? Didn't you know he was married before? Yes. Yes, I knew. Ronald told me about you. But you're... Well, you're... You're not quite what I imagined. I was as pretty as you once. Oh, please, I didn't mean to be rude. I know. Look in the mirror. From the way you look now, to how I look, took just three years. I don't understand. Three years of being married to Ronald Millet. That's an awful thing to say. It's the truth. He took it. On our honeymoon. The honeymoon I paid for. Just as I paid for everything else. Did that matter so much if you loved him? No. Nothing mattered then. I thought I had enough money for both of us. But I was wrong. Only had enough for him. Now I have to earn mine. The hard way. Why are you telling me all this? Because I don't want you to make the same mistake. It can't be true. It can't be. Why don't you go out there and ask Inspector Duval? Duval! So that's it. He sent you in here. Oh, please, please, you must listen to me. Ronald even tried to kill me. Go back to your precious Inspector Duval and tell him it didn't work. And you can tell both him and my father Next time they want to start a dirt-slinging campaign against Ronald, they should choose someone better than a paid hostess. Somehow, we've got to make her see reason. 
I'm sorry I let you down. Not your fault. Just a chance that she'd listen to another woman. We still have time. It's two months before she comes of age. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, good. Send him in. They brought in the doctor. Maybe this time he'll remember a bit more. Well, sit down, doctor. I demand to know why I've been dragged out here like a common criminal. Doctor, why didn't you tell us you performed the post-mortem on Mrs. Millet? Am I supposed to remember every post-mortem I've done? Just this one. And you did remember. You gave us details of multiple injuries. It's here, in police records. Fractured skull, crushed ribs, legs broken. Look, if you told me what you're trying to find out, I might be more able to help. We want to know the exact cause of Mrs. Miller's death. I've told you a dozen times her car went over a cliff. So did this, ladies. Let me introduce you to the second Mrs. Millet. Madame. Where do I know you from, Doctor? I don't think we've ever met. I still can't see what all this has to do with me. We think the second crash was not an accident. It was a deliberate attempt at murder. Murder? Doctor, was there anything in your post-mortem that seemed unusual? I'm sorry. I'd like to help, but there's nothing more I can tell you. Isn't there, Doctor? Oh, you are quite right. We have never met before. But there was a photograph. Ronald kept it. It was the only piece of sentiment he ever showed. Dr. Martin is Ronald's father. Well, Doctor, I have nothing to say. We'll have the body exhumed. You won't find anything. But you did. You've got to tell us, Doctor. Your son is about to get married for the third time. No, 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 he must not. Why? You were right. The first was not an accident. Emma Millet was killed over two hours before her car crashed. You realize you'll be charged as an accessory, Doctor? I know. Why didn't you report it at the time? Ronald is my only son, Inspector. I fooled myself into believing that he'd simply struck an unlucky blow in a quarrel. I thought he'd grow out of his condition. What is his condition? He's unbalanced, mentally sick. I hoped that it was temporary. How bad could he get? A profound emotional shock could snap his mind completely. He would not know what he was doing. A homicidal maniac. We've got to get him to a hospital, and fast. Ah, put the bags in the car, would you? Oui, monsieur. How far is it to Lausanne? About 50 miles. Oh, I was hoping we were going to have a nice long drive. Well, we can take as long as you like. Oh, there's a picnic basket by the reception desk. Would you put it in the car, please? Oui, monsieur. Picnic? Oh, darling, what a lovely idea. Well, it's such a lovely day and a nice drive. I thought you'd like it. Wonderful. Who is it? I just heard. You're checking out. You just heard? The receptionist told me. Have you bought all the staff in this hotel just to keep tabs on me? Louisa, dear, is it wrong for a father to be anxious about his own daughter? After 20 years, you suddenly decide to remember our relationship. Please try to understand. This is no excuse, but when your mother died, somehow nothing mattered to me anymore, not even you. So I should like the chance to put that right. That sounds like a very handsome apology, darling. We accept, sir. We're more than willing to forget all that has happened and start all over again. How much? I don't know what you mean. How much do you want to clear out and leave my daughter alone? You think you can buy everything and everybody? Well, get this once and for all. I'm going to marry Ronald, and there's nothing you can do about it. For the first time in my life, I'm going to be happy. He'll stick to you just as long as your money lasts. Money? That's the only word you know. Well, you're wrong even about that. If you want proof, Ronald has already made a new will. He's leaving everything to me. Your bags are in the car, monsieur. Thanks. 
You've had your chance, Mr. Howard. I'll get my daughter back if I have to hound you through every country in Europe. No, you'll never get her back. I told you to stay out of it. I had to try and stop them somehow. What would you have done? I tried talking to her. But that fellow thought of everything. He's even made out a will in our favor. A will? <laughs> What's he got to leave? Nothing. It's the oldest confidence trick in the world. Mutual wills to show faith in each other. You mean Louise has made a will to him? If she has, she signed her own death warrant. We haven't got two months. We may not even have two hours. Wonderful. It's still better up there. You go on, I'll bring the food. Over halfway to Lausanne. How many more likely places? Three or four. I'll tell you what. Why don't you drive for a bit? Won't you be nervous? I'll try to jump out if I am. Slow down. There's another place around the next bend. There it is, the ghost car. Car stopped. Probably another picnic party. Miss Howard! Miss Howard! Miss Howard! have to stop. It doesn't lead anywhere. Oh. 